Hey guys, welcome to the Makuta 10 Plus tire change. Makuta sends these out with this nice toolkit, and a couple things mainly you're going to need are this socket with 19 and 21 millimeter sockets on it. I'm going to be putting these 10 by 2 tubes in it. They're a bit heavier duty than the stock ones that are Hotas. I'm going to be putting PMT tires on it as well, 10 by 3 E fires. These are the best you can get. Highly recommend them. You're also going to want some baby powder to lube up the inside of the tire. Some brake cleaner, your brake pads. We're going to replace the brake pads real quick after this too. And this is my favorite tool to help center the brake pads. I suggest you get one of these. Now, the Makoto 10 Plus has a bit of an advantage over the Visa 10 Plus because of these plugs they have put into the phase wires. So this allows you to quick disconnect your motor without having to go inside the battery deck, which is a big improvement over the Visa 10 Plus, which is kind of a pain in the ass to change the tires on that scooter. Start off by loosening your caliper screws and make sure that you pay attention to where the washers are. Usually is some that adjust the height to there. In this Mukutta, there is one below and one above. So you're going to take that off and remember the orientation. Next, you're going to loosen your axle nuts. Probably best to do this on the floor, not on the table. To free up our motor wire the rest of the way, there's a small nut under here. You unscrew it in this little bracket. Then it's easier to get the motor wire out if you loosen the suspension arm just a little bit, a couple turns. Then you should be able to slide the motor wire out, including the plug, which is a little bit wider than the wire. Once your motor wire is free, then you can proceed to pull your tire off, do some deep cleaning in places that you can't usually get to. You're going to let the air out of your tire, and then we're going to proceed to split the rim. You want to use these screws here. These are the split rim screws, not the stainless steel ones that are up higher on the motor. Those will actually split the motor open. So I like to loosen them all by hand. You can then use a drill to get them the rest of the way out if you want. But then you definitely want to tighten them by hand back when you tighten them down too as well. Next you can pull your split rim apart. It takes a little muscle there. Just pull hard. It should look like this. Next you're going to find the tire rotation should be a mark on your tires and make sure that when you put the new tire on it is in the same orientation, the same rotation direction as your stock tire. I blow up the tube just enough to have the shape and then what I do is I put baby powder all over it, coat it completely. This will reduce the friction and stop any tearing of the tube. That I've had a bunch of problems with flats before and I have not had a flat since I started doing this. Highly recommend you put the baby powder in. Next, get your tire all lined up, orientated the correct way with your split rim piece. And then we're going to go ahead and put that back on. You want to make sure there's nothing pinching, most importantly. Make sure everything fits perfectly. You're going to line up the holes exactly perfect here. And take your time and make sure everything's lined up. And then we're going to put our screws back in, the six split rim screws. Once everything's tightened up, you can reinflate your tire. And then I recommend using the brake cleaner to clean the brake quick. You just spray some on a paper towel, spray it outside. These fumes are kind of deadly. And then you just carefully wipe off all of that brake dust that accumulates on the rotor. What this will do is this will prevent that squealing that a lot of scooters get if you don't keep your brakes clean. Then you're going to put your motor back into the suspension arms. Carefully lining everything up. Make sure that your motor wire is orientated the correct way. The washers are all orientated the correct way of the, the way that you took them off. Make sure that everything looks correct and lines up correct. And then you can tighten one side once it's in. Tighten these by hand first. You may have to push it a little bit, hit it a little bit to get the one other side in. It's usually a little bit of a tight fit. Then you're going to tighten that side on by hand as well. Once you have both sides tight, we're going to deal with this motor wire by feeding it back the way it came through. If you're having trouble fitting it, you can compress the shock by turning it clockwise. And you will be able to gain a little bit more clearance to fit the plug through there without damaging it. Obviously, put the shock back to its equal placement to the other side once you're done. Next, you're going to put that little bracket on. This is probably my least favorite thing of the whole job. It's a bit of a pain in the butt little spot and it's hard to get the tool in there especially hard to get the camera in there while you're doing it but yeah it is what it is there next we're going to do the brakes quick take the pin out straighten it and pull it out you can pull the brake pads out these are toast they've been in the scooter now for a few hundred miles of heavy riding 
get some new ones you can get these very cheap on aliexpress i buy 10 at a time for about 50 bucks take the brake cleaner wipe down everything on your caliper get it nice and clean get those pads ready to go in and slide them in make sure everything is lined up perfectly make sure the spring is in there perfectly and there you go i'm going to slide the pin back in and bend the back side to lock in the brake pads then you're going to take a flathead screwdriver and compress the pistons so that there's a big gap in the middle put your caliper back on your rotor and then now we're going to put our screws back and then use our little caliper adjustment tool that i showed you at the beginning this little tool helps put the caliper in the perfect spot but more importantly it helps set the depth of the pistons to the correct spot for your rotors so that both pistons make perfect contact at the same time here's how you use it you slip it on the rotor and then slide it inside of the caliper and then proceed as usual you would tighten by holding your brake handle on the handlebar and then tightening both nuts and that would normally center it pretty well but with this tool it centers it perfectly that's the point of the caliper gap setting tool and here you'll hear perfect free spin every time first try first try with the gap setting tool the rear end of the scooter is very similar as a phase wire connector you just have to unscrew these four bolts on this little fender piece with the light on it and then you can get in there and pull that out other than that the the back end is about the same procedure you're going to take your brake off you're going to free up that motor wire you're going to pull off your motor you may need to pry it a bit with a flathead like this very gently. Let the air out, separate your motor wire, and proceed as normal with the tire change. If this was helpful, drop a subscribe. Thanks. Scooter Gang out.